I am J. Eugene Grigsby, Jr. I consider myself both an art educator and an artist. Uh, but as I have reflected recently, I am more involved as an art educator than as an artist. He's been at it for more than 75 years. He lives art. In fact, he breathes it. I believe that Dr. Grigsby is one of the most accomplished and gifted artists in the world today. And that is the way I introduce him. When I talk about Dr. Grigsby, he's a great, great artist, but he's really an outstanding, outstanding man. Creating visual art and guiding others in their quest to do the same has been Gene Grigsby's life's work. Bright colors combine with abstract figures to dominate most of his canvases. In between the images, there are often political or social messages. Well, I think an artist should make a statement. And his art expresses all of what I talk about is shared universal human concerns. And those involve four questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? What's my purpose for being? And where am I going to go when I die? And so that, all of his art speaks a dialogue that deals with very important universal issues. Grigsby is known internationally for his work, much of it inspired by his study of African art and its influence on modern culture. I set out, I didn't have any plan when I set out. It all just happened. In fact, most of the things that happened to me, I backed into them. And I tried to take advantage of those things that did happen. Jefferson Eugene Grigsby Jr. was the first of four children born to J.E. Grigsby Sr. and Perry Dixon Grigsby. The elder Grigsby was a college professor and moved his family around wherever he found work. The Grigsbys moved five times before settling in Charlotte, North Carolina. There, young Grigsby had a paper route and delivered newspapers to Negro professionals as well as prostitutes and numbers runners. There was one customer, a stonemason, who was not home long enough for Grigsby to collect. So one morning at about four o'clock, Grigsby knocked on the door of Mr. Walker Foster. When I knocked on the door, he opened the door and I looked around, there were paintings all around, leaning against the wall. And I asked him where he got those, and he said he painted them. And I laughed uh, because I didn't, I didn't believe him. And he saw that I didn't believe him. I didn't believe him because he, was, uh, he didn't fit my concept of an artist. My, all the pictures of artists I had seen were white and blonde and blue-eyed. This guy was quite black. Foster gave Grigsby lessons. Grigsby's earliest paintings were moonlight scenes. Walker Foster didn't just open the door to his house for Grigsby. He opened the door to a world of possibilities. And that was the beginning of my, my painting. At the age of 16, eager to learn more about art, Grigsby transferred from Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte to Morehouse College in Atlanta. There, Gene studied under renowned artist Hale Woodruff, who became one of his biggest influences. Hale Woodruff was an easygoing teacher, and as I described in an article, his teaching was more caught than taught. You, you just followed him and emulated what he did, but he did more than just teach. I was more of a protege, and uh, it was more like, Hale was more like an uncle than a teacher. Woodruff called his students the outhouse gang. That's because he had students paint scenes of rundown shacks on canvas. Others were sketched on linoleum, then the images were carved and inked. Gene loved painting and had no interest in his family profession, teaching. Instead, he wanted to go to art school. The family was always felt that education was a means of freedom. Grigsby graduated from Morehouse at the age of 19 and wanted to try his luck in New York. With $125 in his pocket, Grigsby headed for New York City. After paying bus fare, he only had enough left to rent a room at the YMCA Annex on 135th Street in Harlem. My first day in New York, the clerk said there's a exhibit at the main Y across the street. So 
I went over to this to see this exhibit. And as I walked around, I uh, met this other guy who was there, the only other person in the exhibit, introduced myself, said, I'm Eugene Grigsby from Charlotte. He said, I'm Jacob Lawrence from New York. Jacob Lawrence had been the only black student at the American Artist School the year before. And he said, there's some other artists here from Charlotte. Those other artists turned out to be Charles Alston and Romery Bearden. Lifetime friendships were begun that day. Grigsby would become friends with other Harlemites of the period, like poet Langston Hughes and sculptor Selma Burke. I would visit Selma whenever I'd get hungry. Uh, I could always get a meal at Selma's, but Selma lived on the east side, downtown New York, and it took a lot, a lot of while to get down to her place. Grigsby eventually traded the dance halls of Harlem for the classrooms of Ohio. He earned a master's degree at Ohio State University. Then he married and started a family. He taught briefly in a few southern colleges before settling in Phoenix, Arizona. And although teaching was not something he set out to do, it has provided his greatest reward. Teaching is something I'm backed into. And the more I got involved, the more I liked it. When we were in, uh, in high school in the art club, Dr. Grigsby uh, did a lot of things for us to, uh, to expand our vision. And one of them was to take us everywhere in his old blue station wagon. Here's Gene. Do you see how young he is? This is 1955. That was the first year he came up. Have you noticed Dr. Grigsby always had different shirts than any other teacher? You know, those colors I can still see right now. They were gold, green, maroon, and navy blue. I went on to become a mentor teacher in uh, California. Every art teacher that I mentored, I would say, this is how you do it. And uh, I'd have to explain, it's not my idea. There's a man in Arizona who's who's Eugene Grigsby, and he's the one that taught me, so don't think that these are my ideas, these are his, so remember that. Over the years, Eugene Grigsby has received numerous awards. Among them are an Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts from the Philadelphia College of Art, and the Medallion of Merit from the National Gallery of Art on its 25th anniversary. He was among six American artists invited by the Museum of Modern Art to teach at the World's Fair in Belgium and he was honored in his home state as an Arizona history maker, along with notables Senator Barry Goldwater and Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. His book, Art and Ethnics, published in the late 70s, is widely recognized as the first book to help art teachers consider diversity in their classrooms. Grigsby retired from Arizona State University after 27 years. He recruited Bernard Young to take his place. I never, ever uh, try to uh, uh, take his place in any way at all, I, and I, I never dreamed to, to try to fill his shoes. His, his shoes are just too deep to fill. He has had a, a, a huge, a enormous imprint in the minds of uh, teachers and professors and, and presidents uh, across the United States about the importance of diversity and uh, enriching uh, people with uh, multicultural issues and art. Grigsby, now in his 89th year, is a sort of griot of art education, a village fixture, both cherished and revered.